Without any further ado, I'd like to ask our experts to provide us with some perspective on tomorrow's USDA reports and grain market activity. Uh, with that, I'll pass it over to Mike, who is going to cover corn. Mike? Thank you, Chris. Um, as we look at tomorrow's reports, there's several of them, obviously. Uh, among them, the three most important, in my opinion, will be the crop production report, the uh, WASD report, and the uh, quarterly grain stocks report. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, crop production report, one of the biggest things that I believe is going to be a conversation point and watch very closely will be the harvested acres number. If you go back over the last several months, that number alone has been one of the more widely contested numbers, one that most people expected to uh, fall, uh, yet uh, we've seen a little uh, movement in that direction. Um, if you go back over the last 40 years, we've seen uh, a steady decline in abandonment rates uh, such that uh, if you look at the trend line, we'd expect in a year like this uh, about a 7.4% abandonment rate. We're going to come in at about 9.5%, which uh, compares to last year's numbers at about 87 and the year before at about 7.8%. So, we, we've seen some, you know, mild uh, uh, increases in, in abandonment, but they don't compare to years that would be similar to the ones that we just went through. Uh, 2012 was obviously a drought year that uh, made a lot of press. Uh, we'll go down in the record books. And when you go through a drought year like this and make some comparisons to years like 1983 or 1988, uh, you'll notice in years, uh, those two years specifically, that uh, we saw declines of uh, closer to 14%. So to have a 9.5% abandonment rate uh, seems a little bit light relative to the weather and the type of situations that we went through, the things that we saw happening. Uh, even in talking with my own clients, there were a lot of livestock producers that were forced because of the light tonnage and silage to ultimately cut many more acres to fill their bunkers or storage facilities. In some cases, more than twice the amount of acres were needed to do the job. Uh, not to mention that the feed quality isn't going to be as good and for those that did cut the normal amount or even those that uh, uh, cut more silage, they're going to need to supplement with uh, other corn grains. So, um, you know, we're seeing uh, a likelihood that uh, there will be some, some uh, greater decline in harvested acres. Uh, if you look at private analysis at the moment uh, and, and look at the whole range of estimates, the very upper end of the range is right in line with what the current number is, which is 87.7 million acres. Uh, the average guess is 700,000 acres below that. I fully expect that we're going to see some movement towards that average guess. Uh, could lose as much as a million acres uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the harvested side. Uh, if we move over and look at feed usage, this is something that hasn't gotten a lot of discussion, but I think will in time. Uh, they may or may not make any adjustments in, this, in, in tomorrow's report, uh, but it is something that likely will come in front of us sooner than later. Uh, if we look at what's been happening in the beef herd, obviously the drought has continued to uh, rob us of our cattle inventory. Um, however, we've been seeing some uh, more intense feeding in the feedlots, and uh, slaughter weights have gone up to offset the loss in headcount. Uh, the hog and pig report that came out here last week, or two weeks ago, I guess, uh, revealed that uh, we ultimately are, are seeing a little bit bigger herd than what we had initially anticipated, bigger than even 2011. Egg sets are up. Uh, sl sl uh, culling on the dairy herd hasn't been as intense as, as we expected. Uh, ultimately, um, we're looking for uh, some, in some increases on, on the feed side. Uh, as we go forward, maybe 100 to 200 million bushels. Exports have been very quiet of late, uh, lackluster at best. Uh, the 1.15 number could easily come back towards a billion bushels, so look for some trimming there. Uh, and on the grain stocks, uh, with the current crop expected at uh, uh, just over or just under 11 billion bushels, we're, we're 1.7 billion bushels smaller than we were the year before. Stocks are 150 million bushels lighter, and as a result, uh, it, you know, it goes without saying that, that stocks are going to be a, a little bit light. Uh, but when you factor in the, the, the demand being 1.4 billion bushels less and look at uh, just some linear projections, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to agree with the 8.2 billion bushel analyst uh, guess. Uh, could even see that a little bit lighter. So uh, with regard to the reports tomorrow, uh, likely a little bit of a bullish bent. Bill, would you care to cover soybeans for us? Yeah, I'll try to get that done in the time allotted. Uh, uh, first off, again, we have uh, two major reports. Um, 
the production report, stocks report. Uh, with regard to the production report, on average, according to at least one media survey, uh, the uh, trade is looking for the soybean crop to be up 28 million bushels. Uh, for our firm, Ag Resource, that is not our perspective. We're actually expecting the crop to be down. Um, the range in uh, industry estimates uh, for the soybean crop is unusually wide. There's about a 6.2 percent difference between the highest estimate and the lowest estimate. On average, the range is only about 3.2 percent. So there's a lot of debate within the trade about whether or not the soybean crop, uh, particularly the pod weights, uh, which are uh, in the November estimate were uh, deemed to be at a record level. A lot of people are scratching their heads saying, how is that possible given the terrible crop conditions that we saw? But um, uh, so some people have, uh, like ourselves have uh, brought the pod weight down and in turn that brings down the yield. There's a uh, no tendency, no noticeable tendency for the report to be above or below. I mean, it does, it ends up being above and below, but there's no tendency, no bias that the, uh, the trade seems to have. Uh, with regard to the stocks report, uh, the uh, trade is looking for um, uh, December soybean stocks to be down 328 million bushels from the same level a year ago. Uh, what's interesting, if you go back and examine the history of the trade estimate versus the final estimate, the final number, 72 percent of the time the December stocks report was actually below expectations. In uh, years that the crop, re the stocks number came below expectation, the average difference was about 37 million bushels. So there is a, t a bias for the industry to overestimate December stocks. Uh, the last thing is, well, what's this mean for prices? Uh, if you take a look at various price models uh, to see how, let's say, July soybean futures responded the day after the report or a week after the report, there's relatively weak reaction to surprises in the production report or surprises in the stocks report. But the soybean market does react. What it reacts most strongly to is his numbers. The, the corn numbers. So what happens is the soybean market, at least prices, seem to take their strongest cue from what the corn market's doing. So we could see bullish or bearish soybean numbers and let's say an opposite reaction with regard to soybean prices if the corn market has a sharp movement up or down. One of the things that we've noticed is I think three or four out of the last five or six years, you've seen limit or near limit moves in the corn market the day of the report. So if we see that kind of volatility tomorrow, most likely we'll see soybeans being uh, going along with it. Um, lastly, we have exceptionally strong soybean exports. Um, um, in, in the case of soy meal, we have soy meal export commitments that I think are at or near a record level. And if you take a look at how, how large export commitments were this morning versus what the USDA is projecting, we have record percentages of uh, both soy meal and soy oil, record percentages of what's being projected. As a consequence, a lot of analysts expect that USDA will be forced to raise their crush estimate. Lastly, there's, um, uh, we're all interested in seeing how USDA is going to react with regard to the, um, uh, the re restoration of the $1 per gallon biodiesel uh, tax credit. Will the USDA raise their estimate of soy oil uh, used for methyl ester, and what impact will that have, again, on the crush estimate? Um, thank you. Great. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Jerry, wheat, please. Yes. Well, the uh, wheat production uh, number on the uh, final production number tends not to change very much. So we'll, the, in most cases here, we're going to anticipate the no change from the small grain numbers that were put out in late September. Uh, so the uh, wheat market looks at your December stocks numbers, of course. Uh, uh, that's kind of based upon, a little, of course, the exports that we can track. Uh, it wasn't a great fall number here. We were looking for 200, 210 million kind of number. Uh, and food usage kind of came in as expected. Uh, traditionally, the fall, we tend to give a little bit back in the, the, the big numbers that happen during the summertime on feed usage. But uh, the g general trade expectations here seems to be tracking kind of the 70 to 80 million uh, number that keeps 
comes back into the uh, stocks number. Uh, the stocks number uh, is uh, not much difference from last year. Uh, the average trade guess of materials uh, uh, on stocks is um, 1.66. Uh, versus uh, the 1.665 that the uh, we had last year, so there's not a lot of excitement in that in the uh, stocks number, but it, the uh, overall attitude here is going to be looking at uh, the world numbers. Not a lot of change in the northern hemisphere right now. There's some expectations of maybe our Argentina going down, maybe 50 a half a million to a million metric tons because of their wet. Uh, conditions during their harvest period. Uh, Australia's numbers uh, were up to 1 million to 22 million last time around, so there's not a lot of change there. The, uh, and then you finally get to the last thing that's out there, which really doesn't relate to any of the other things in corn and soybeans, is, of course, is what the uh, U.S. Uh, winter wheat plantings uh, were at. And there's definitely plenty of, uh, of consternation about that number. Uh, Price-wise, uh, we'd encourage to anticipate more plantings. Probably did have that happen in the soft red areas here. Uh, the trade's looking for about a 900,000 acre increase in that. I'd have to say that uh, our estimate's just a little less than that uh, on an overall basis. The uh, numbers out of the hard, excuse me, out of the U.S. Plain states. Uh, kind of vacillate. Uh, initially here, expectations were probably closer to half a million or more, uh, but the dry weather that uh, really put the crop conditions uh, when they finalized out here just at the Thanksgiving period at their lowest levels uh, in the USDA survey levels, it's kind of uh, it possibly cut back some of the Oklahoma and Texas seedings in. Uh, so the uh, average trade guesstimate is up about 1.3 million acres here overall, I'd probably say that uh, that number could be a little on the less side of it uh, than uh, above that. And interestingly, one of the trends that's happened in the winter wheat seeding uh, levels here, the trade expectations versus the final number, uh, since 1988, uh, us analysts in Chicago and around the industry have had a very poor record in the fact that for uh, all those years, uh, we had about five or six we were kind of on target, maybe slightly less in most cases. Then the rest of the time we were significantly above what the trade, the actual number that came out. The only number that was different was, of course, last year, first time that we actually had the numbers uh, going up uh, versus expectations. So overall, the uh, numbers out tomorrow, uh, we're concentrating on the wheat, and at the same time, uh, wheat seedings, and we'll be also... Uh, trying to figure out uh, how the world number is going to fit in with how the corn and soybean numbers uh, that are released.